I want to invite uh, one of my good friends, Ben Grubbs. Y'all give it up for Ben Grubbs. He's coming on up, up here on the stage. I'm so honored to uh, have my good friend Ben here. One of the privileges I have in New Orleans is I get to serve as the lead pastor. You about to tackle me, homie? And uh, uh, get to serve as the lead pastor of Vintage Church, but also get to serve as chaplain with the uh, New Orleans Saints. So I get to journey. If you don't know who Ben Grubbs is, Ben Grubbs ser- uh, serves and plays on our uh, New Orleans Saints team. And uh, who that? And uh, congratulations, Ben, for getting Pro Bowl this last season. Man, Thank we're proud you. of you, man. Um, tell us a little bit. Of, I know your, your wife's here and your, your girls are here. Tell us a little bit about Ben Grubbs. Tell us where you're from, your family. Give us a little hookup on that. Um, I'm a son of uh, Deborah Grubbs. Um, my dad, Richard Grubbs, died when I was five. My mom had uh, my older brother, Cedric Grubbs, so I'm one of two boys. Um, I grew up in Eclectic, Alabama, a small town, uh, 2,000 people, one red light, you know, so New Orleans is huge for, to me. Um, I went to Auburn, I got a scholarship to Auburn, played football there, War Eagle. And, Keep uh, quiet, please. <laughs> Keep quiet. Uh, Tiger baby. <laughs> I see Al Hilton in the back. We got a huge Auburn fan in the back. Just shh, shh. All right, sorry, Ben. I went to Auburn, um, played there for five years. I ended up getting drafted to uh, Baltimore, and um, I'm sorry, you asked about my family, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going good, on man. about my football experience, sorry. Right. <laughs> so, all right, so my family, I have, I, I got married, so July the 13th of this year, I'll be married for a year. Um, yeah. I, married, I married my beautiful wife, Shania Goodwin, but uh, Shania Grubbs now, um, you know, it's been a wonderful experience. We have three, three kids, uh, Nalani, Nashaya, and Landon. And uh, we are expecting, we're expecting one. We don't know what it is right now, so we're waiting. Um, is this going to be a surprise? Be a surprise. Yeah, it's going to be a surprise. She's due August the 23rd. Bless you. Bless yeah. you. Yeah, yeah so awesome. it's, it's, been, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I just love serving my family. You know, as, I, as I've grown uh, as I've grown in my Christianity, you know, my wife can tell you I've, I've been able to serve her a lot, a lot better. So yeah, it's, awesome. it's been good. So tell us your football journey, mm-hmm. Auburn, then you went to Baltimore, played there. We'll forgive you yeah. for that, too. <laughs> and then uh, when did you come to New Orleans? So I came to New Orleans uh, two years ago. Um, this is going on my third year. I came to New Orleans. Um, I entered free agency. And, uh, you know, I've been in Baltimore for five years. Or I was in Baltimore for five years. You know, I dated my, um, my wife, and, uh, you know, that was, my, that was my norm. You know, everything, everything was familiar to me. So uh, when I entered free agency, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, you know, I, I, I wanted to stay in Baltimore, but, you know, God had different plans. And uh, I'm only able to see that now, but I didn't know that then. Um, so New, New Orleans, you know, ended up calling me. They invited me in. You know, I liked what I saw. Um, you know, everything just turned out right. So I ended up coming here, and I'm going on my third year playing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. You know, the fans here are unbelievable. Um, there's nothing like it. I mean, honestly, there is nothing like it. Baltimore was great. But, you know, the time that I've been here has really overshadowed that. And I've just been so thankful, you know, for you all, you know, inviting me and my family in to uh, serve you. So talk, uh, talk with us a little bit about, because you and I have talked a lot about this, how, yes, you know, uh, coming here to the New Orleans Saints, ton better than being a Baltimore Raven, and we, we know all that. We, we, we don't need to be bragging on the New Orleans Saints or nothing, but, like, God was up to something. Right. And it was really during that time of transition that, that you really encountered Jesus uh, in a yeah. true and real way. Talk about just your salvation experience well, and even what we experienced in California. I mean, coming here was just one of the pieces to God's puzzle. Um, you know, it started, the seed was planted when I... Um, you know, when my mom started taking me to church. And, uh, you know, then I, went to, um, then I went to college, and my chaplain there, you know, continued to plant those seeds by doing Bible studies, by inviting me to, uh, you know, different events that they were hosting there. Um, and then I went to Baltimore, and um, my chaplain, who also was our marriage counselor, um, Pastor Rod Harrison, he, uh, you know, took us in, took my wife and I in under his wings, 
and just continue to, you know, mentor to me and to just feed me the word. Then I come here, and Lord bless me with Pastor Rob and, you know, the things that he has taught me. You know, all that was just now that I'm seeing it, all of that was just the pieces of the puzzle. You know, it, it may not, I'm, you know, everybody's different. So for me, it took me a little longer to, to, to dive in. And I thought that, you know, I'll just wait until I'm done playing football. Uh, you know, I'm just going to enjoy this, this, this experience that God has blessed me with. So that's, that's, that was my thinking. That was my mindset. But now that I've became more knowledgeable, I know that God didn't bless me to play football just to make money, just to enjoy the entertainment, you know, to, to take care of my family. All those things are great. But now that I have became more knowledgeable, I know that he put me there because I have an assignment. And my assignment is to bring souls to him. And so that's, so that's my focus now. And, once, and I think once we get that, once we understand our assignment, then everything else falls in place. And I, um, you know, I'm just so thankful that I, it, it wasn't too late for him. I'm so thankful that he didn't come and, you know, call his, uh, his, um, his people, you know, with him to come to heaven because I don't know if I would have made it. And, uh, you know, when we talk about salvation, you know, I understand now that I, did, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve salvation, but it's only because of God's grace and mercy. And it's, you know, it's not, I mean, I play, I play football, I play this great game of football, you know, I lift the weights, I go out there and I sweat, and I, you know, take on 300-pounder, 300, pounder, 300 pounders, but it's not by my might, it's only by his. And, you know, just knowing that the assignment that he gave me, knowing that I'm still working and I'm still, I'm still on his job, you know, I don't really worry about injuries, I don't worry about job security, because I know that he has me, and I, and I know that he's not going to, I'm not going to leave this game until he's ready for me. So while I'm here on earth, I'm just going to continue, you know, to, uh, you know, see if I can reach people by giving my testimony, you know, by, by planting that seed to someone who may not know Jesus. So tell us in the last couple of years, you, you were saved by the gospel of Jesus, and, and you followed up that. Tell us a little bit about that experience that we had uh, together in San Diego. Oh, man, San Diego. Um, well, uh, if you remember a couple, well, before I got married, you know, I came to Pastor Rob because I was in, I was in, uh, you know, I, I was in need of, you know, some spiritual guidance. Uh, we met at um, Starbucks. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, we met at Starbucks. <laughs> we met at Starbucks. And, uh, you know, I, we were, you know, my, my wife and I, you know, we were just going through some things. Before we got married, we were going through some things. You know, I moved down here. She was still in Baltimore. So there were just a lot of things, a lot of uncertainties. And, you know, I just told Pastor Rob my story. And, you know, he talked about, you know, the love, the love of Jesus and, uh, you know, how I, I can't love my wife with my love alone. You know, I have to have Jesus' love. And, you know, he's one of the big reasons that, you know, my wife and I are married, you know, along with my chaplain in, in Baltimore. So, you know, I, I want to say that being married was one of the pieces to God's puzzle as well, because I think marriage is like the best growth curriculum for men. I mean, it is. Preach to our <laughs> single guys. Preach, man. Come on. If you want to. Preach it. You know, I think God gave us marriage to, to grow us up. Come on, brother. Amen. And, you know, I didn't think I was selfish before I got married. But, yeah, I'm selfish. I'm really selfish. And God has really, he's just been chipping away on that rock. Um, and me, me and my wife, man. So, you know, it's been, it's been a good experience. So we went to PAO in February, I think, or March. February, um, it's out in California. It's, uh, um, it's a marriage conference. And uh, I think right around 400, 400, 500 people were there, you know, football players and their wives, girlfriends. There were some single men as well. And, you know, just that whole experience was a mountaintop experience for us. Um, um, you know, we had a lot of great worshiping. We had a lot of great speakers come. Um, you know, the one thing that really changed my perspective and my prayer life, Francis Chan spoke to us while we were out there. And everybody was saying, man, you know, wait until you hear this guy. This guy is special. So he got up and spoke to us, and he talked about prayer. Before he went to speak to us, he, I saw him on his knees on the side, and he was praying. So when he got up, he spoke about, he spoke about 
God's presence. And if we really knew who we were praying to, we wouldn't be casually laying in bed praying. We wouldn't talk to Jesus like he's one of our homeboys. We would really come to him correct. And he just started describing the things that are in heaven and how those creatures are praising God 24-7. Holy, holy, holy. And I'm like, man, if they're doing it, what, you know, what more do I need to do? So that day, like his prayer before he was on his, when he was on his knees, his prayer was that everybody will fall to your knees. The Bible says every knee will bow. So whether you believe it or not, you're going to bow. And, you know, hopefully it's not too late. So he prayed that prayer. And before the day was over, before his speech was over, you know, he invited everybody to get down on their knees. The whole, the whole room fell to their knees. I mean, my wife was crying. I was tearing up. I mean, it was just that crying, amazing. Just just I was tearing up. Crying. I was You're tearing crying. up, Pastor. Sissy. Yeah. No, Big I was sissy. tearing up. I, it was an amazing experience, man. And that has changed my prayer life. I no longer lay in bed and pray to, to, to God. Um, I get on my knees. I submit to him. My wife gets on her knees and submit to him. And the reason why that story is so great because, you know, I was, I, my, my story, I was so far away from Jesus in the past. And I thought what's, what's so, so sad was I thought I was okay. And there's a lot of us who think that we are okay, think that we have time. But, you know, just by the grace of God, you know, he changed my heart. He changed my wife's heart. And, you know, that whole experience out in California just brought me closer to God. And it's, it's amazing, man. It was, it, was, it was a mountaintop experience. Really yeah. out of you learning as we've talked about this, that, that we submit all things to God. That was when you were challenged to be baptized as a believer and, oh, yeah. and following up Jesus with your baptism. Yeah, so, um, you know, I gave my life to Christ or I recommitted my life to Christ um, August the 12th, 2012. That's the same day that my wife gave her life to Christ. And uh, she shortly after got baptized in Baltimore by our um, counselor, our marriage counselor, and our pastor up there. So I remember my mom telling me that I, I was sprinkled when I was young, which I don't remember. Um, so all along at, at PAO, you know, um, Pastor Miles McPherson, you know, was saying that we are going to be baptizing. And if you haven't been baptized, you know, this is a great opportunity. He said, baptized now, not sprinkled. And I was like, man, I thought I was fine. I thought I was good. So he, he said, baptized, not sprinkled. He started talking about how, you know, when you are immersed in water, you know, you're dying to your sins. And when you come up, you know, that, that represents the resurrection. And I'm like, man, I want some of that. And I said, I got to go get it. I got to go get it. So after, the, after, the, after his sermon, you know, he told everybody to go upstairs who were getting baptized to change. I said, if I go upstairs, I'm, I may not come down. So I'm like, I'm just going in just like I am. You know, I had, I had my nice clothes on, so I, I just went straight to the water. And, uh, you know, my, um, our teammate, or ex-teammate, Roman Harper, he's now the enemy, Roman, <laughs> Roman Harper, uh, you know, also was being baptized. So we went, we, we uh, you know, of course, uh, invited Pastor Rob with us, and uh, Pastor Rob was with me. <laughs> he was holding me. <laughs> he was like, hey, brother, don't go down. Nah. Don't go down by yourself. I can't hold you up. <laughs> so he, when, um, you know, man, when I, when I went down and I came up, it's, you know, for you who have been baptized, like that, so, like, we don't give it enough, uh, enough praise. I mean, that's amazing. That's an amazing experience. And it, it really, I felt like a different man. I felt like a different man. I felt more of the family. I felt like I was part of the family more. And, um, you know, it, it, the Bible says, repent, turn away from your sins, and be baptized. So I was just being obedient, and I'm thankful, you know, for that opportunity. Everything just lined up perfectly, man, with my life, and it's, it's unbelievable. Well, and I'm, and I'm thankful for, for Ben, guys. I, I don't know if you guys realize this. There's a, there's a lot of people watching this guy, and um, he's really chosen with his foundation. He's got a uh, a softball game coming up uh, pretty soon at Zephyr Stadium for his foundation. And um, we've been processing together how he can use his platform to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. And uh, one of the ways in which we've started to partner together is through opportunities that 
uh, we get invited to uh, with the saints and with our platform. And we took a trip to Angola prison. I want to show you a couple of pictures of uh, me and Ben. Uh, if you guys don't know anything about Angola, uh, Angola prison used to be uh, one of the nation's bloodiest, worst prisons in the world. And uh, God has begun to do something incredible long before me and Ben got there. Um, and revival has hit the prison to where not only are prisoners getting saved by the gospel of Jesus, but they're surrendering to preach the gospel. They're earning their master's degrees to preach the gospel. And they're even planting churches on this prison uh, you know, facility. So uh, there was Ben and I with a guy named Big Lou, the picture before. Big Lou's a big dude and can cook like... A man. I mean, that dude, Amen. incredible. I mean, we would have taken the trip two, three hours just for that food. That's uh, Chaplain Tony, Robert Tony. And you can ask Ben. Ben, like, man, we were blown away with tears streaming down his eyes. He was thanking Ben for being the first New Orleans saint to ever come and share the gospel and to love on the prisoners. So we're thankful for Chaplain Tony. Um, this was a cool experience. We had uh, Mike Singletary come and he spoke after us so it was awesome that we got to open up for Mike Singletary you know and uh, he scared all of us half to death but he was awesome <laughs> and uh, then there was the band there and then you'll see one more picture uh, we got to basically love on about 900 plus uh, inmates Ben just talk to me real quick yeah all glory to the Lord um, as as God used us on that night we saw so many different people come to faith in Jesus but Ben just real quick for for about two minutes because you're stealing time out of my sermon, and this, I didn't ask you to come here to steal time out of my sermon. No, I was kidding. But tell us real quick, okay. how, how, how much did that impact your life in going into a place? I mean, we're both kind of scared yeah. uh, going into a maximum security prison, but just yeah. uh, talk mainly about the impact that that night had on you in terms of just the love of God and ministry that God's called us to. Um, well, going there, like you said, we were I was definitely terrified. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I wasn't because I yes, had big was. grubs with he me. Was. So. When we went to the gate, when we went to the front gate, they didn't even search our, our truck. Like, they just asked for IDs. And we were like, man, this is kind of casual. Like, <laughs> and, and then they gave us a key to a, a key. While we were still on the property, they gave us a, two keys to gates. Like, they were working still. And they're like, make sure you don't leave this on the ground. Like, because they, they are, like, real keys to the, <laughs> to the prisons. So that was one, he, he, was, he was terrified with me, and I was protecting him while we were there. One thing that I, one thing that I, one thing that I got from there, um, once again, that was another mountaintop experience. Um, you know, when you think about prison, you think about, you know, society, me included, I know I have thought bad thoughts about prisoners because of the things that they've done. And, you know, society deemed them, the, the least, the bottom of the barrel. And, you know, the Bible says, uh, when you do to the least of these people, you do unto me. And I, first will be last, last will be first. I'm just thinking about all that while I'm in there because these guys are in there for life. When you go to Angola, you, it's 40 years or more to life. And so they're in there. They don't have, like their hopes, their dreams, every day they slowly dwindle. But yet, these guys were praising God. I mean, you want to talk about somebody praising God, they understand that that's their only way out. They understand that's their only way out. And then we, as free people, you know, walk here like we are entitled to, to you know, to what we have. And we forget that, you know, it, it, it all comes from above. And that's one thing that I learned. So I look at the prisoners praising God. I'm like, so why, why am I not praising God like that? You know, they understand something that I, that I don't. And they get it, and they're not ashamed. So while I was there, and I just listened to them praise God, and I listened to them scream, like the roof coming off, like the worship group was unbelievable, like, like the one that you just heard here, um, just hearing their testimonies and, and talking to them, I understood that they're people too. And I understand that God doesn't look at them differently just because they're in prison. The Bible says he came for the world, and we all in the world, and... So therefore, we are sinners, so we're no different than them. They just made some bad choices. And everybody, all, everybody in this room has come to, like, some type of crossroad. And, you know, thankfully, by the grace of God, we went the right way. Um, but for 30, 40 seconds, they made, the bad, they made a bad decision, and, uh, you know, they got them in prison 
for the rest of their lives. And they understand that their way out is through Jesus Christ. And a lot of them gave their life to Christ that night. And it was just an amazing, amazing sight to see. Ben, come on over here. Can y'all thank God for what uh, the Lord's doing in Ben's life? Thank you. And uh, Thanks for having the me. stance that he's uh, making for the Lord. I, I want to close out this time in, in Vintage Church. We, we love sending people out to live the gospel, love the city, and be the church. And this is a guy with unbelievable influence for the kingdom of God. And um, he's walking in fear and trembling in that. This guy's not strutting. Um, he, he knows uh, how great the, the grace of God is in his life, both him and his wife do. And um, could we just extend out our hands as we pray for Ben and we ask for God to continue to use him in a mighty way as we come into this next season and uh, with, his, with his foundation, with everything. And, and Ben, we love you. We love you guys so much. Thank you for blessing us and, and being here with us. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you, and uh, we thank you so much for uh, the Grubbs family. Uh, Jesus, we thank you for your transforming power, uh, the way in which you have come in to display your salvation, and you have come in to equip for your mission. And uh, Lord, this is a, a man and a family that stands before you available and ready to be used by you. So Lord Jesus, I just ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, that you would empower Ben and his family to live the gospel, to love the city, and to be the church. And Lord Jesus, may thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people come to know you as a result. So we love you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.